What's up everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we're going to be installing paddle shift extensions on the golf. In addition to that, we're gonna be comparing some $25 paddle extensions to some $250 paddle extensions to some that actually just stick on. And after doing a little test fitting, these don't even come close to fitting. They're, I guess, not the right ones. So uh, we won't be doing anything with these. I don't like the stick-on kind anyway. I like the ones that are the direct replacement for the OEM buttons. As far as a DIY, this is pretty straightforward. You can do it all with the steering wheel on the car and everything. Now I'm gonna install both of them because I wanna see if there's any feel or fitment difference on the car. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the difference between the ones that I bought for $25 and the ones that cost me a little over $200. All right, let's talk about the three different paddle shifters that I got. The first set are these ones that stick on. Now, these aren't the ones that actually fit the car. I'm a little disappointed because they said they did fit the Golf R, but clearly they don't. This cup is not the right size. These are actually kind of cool. I like the way they look. They screw on to the little cups here, so you could always, I guess, take them on and off super easy. Like I said, I think they would look good in the car, but since they don't fit, it doesn't matter. I also don't like the stick-on ones because I don't want to have to worry about them coming back off. Now with the right adhesive and the right prep, they could be on there for quite some time, but I also want to be able to put them back to factory if needed. So we'll just set those to the side for now. The next cheap set I got are these. Got these off of eBay. These were about $26, I think. Took three or four days to get. These replace the entire factory button. There's a pin that we'll have to remove on each side, remove the factory one and install these. And I actually think these look pretty good. The third set I got is the expensive set, which these came in a nice fancy box. These other ones didn't. And these, if you look, are very similar to the ones that I paid $25 for. They're not identical, but they're pretty darn close. And it looks like the design is pretty much the same. These retail for $200 to $225, depending on where you get them. All right, just by looking at them, you can tell these are pretty much the same exact design. However, that doesn't mean that they're the same part and that they're equal in quality. The expensive ones have this little white marking from the company that uh, made them down at the bottom. So that's how you'll be able to easily differentiate between the expensive ones and the ones that were quite a bit cheaper. There's only two really main differences that I see just by looking at them. The finish of these is different. The expensive ones have this high gloss finish and you can actually see the tooling marks inside of the component. I don't think that's a bad thing. I actually think it looks kind of cool. Now the less expensive ones, have this kind of flatter finish on it, which could also look really good in the car. It kind of depends on whichever one you want. You don't really see this in the different pictures that this is very high gloss and that this is a flatter finish. You also don't see the tooling marks inside the less expensive ones like you do on the more expensive ones. Again, not something I really care about. The only other difference I really see is this one has these three lines on it and this is kind of flat and smooth at the back. I don't think that that's going to make any bit of difference. You never see this because this actually faces the front of the vehicle. So you installed in the car, you really only see about that much. So visually, if you want high gloss, these are the ones to go with. If you want a flatter finish, these look pretty good too. The big tell is gonna be how do they feel in the car? Are they loose? Do they rattle? How does that pin slide in? in the, the less expensive one versus the more expensive one. So let's go ahead and get them installed and find out. All right, installation of these paddles is pretty easy. I have the wheel rotated 90 degrees and what we're looking for is the little pin at the bottom of the OEM paddle. You can see it right there. We're gonna remove that pin, pull this paddle off and install the new one. Before we do that though, I'd really like to tape this up a little bit so we don't end up damaging our steering wheel. You can take the steering wheel off if you'd like to do that, if that makes you happy. I'm cool with that. If you're cool with that, we'll just put a piece of tape on the steering wheel, piece of tape on the paddle. Our pin is right here. You can kind of see it behind the tape. We're gonna take a good pair of needle nose pliers like these, and we're just gonna reach in and grab the pin. See the pin just slides right out. That came out super easy. Here's our pin right here. We wanna take that and we wanna set it down. It's little and we don't wanna lose it. And then we can just pull our paddle shifter off. 
You can see it right here. This is our factory paddle shifter. You can see here, this is our uh, paddle shifter button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our new sh paddle shifter and we are just going to install it. We gotta kind of rock it into place, just like that. Make sure the holes line up. We'll take our pin and we will install it. You may have to kind of wiggle the, wiggle the paddle shifter in order to get that installed all the way. Double check our work, make sure that pin is all the way in. Sure feels like it is. That's it, our shifter is on. Let's go ahead and turn the ignition on. Straighten our steering wheel. So we got our new paddle shifter installed right here. So rather than only being able to push the button with my hand right down here, you got access above and below, which is pretty cool. Actually, I like how it looks. I like how it feels. The one thing I'm concerned about is it's a little wiggly. Now, whether that makes any difference or not while we're actually driving the car, who knows? It does look cool though. I can tell you though, the factory ones also have a tiny bit of wiggle in them as well, but not too bad. So let's, now that we've kind of done that, tested that, it feels good. Let's go ahead and install the less expensive ones, the ones that were about $25 and see how they compare to this one. We got both of them installed. This is the high dollar one, and this is the less expensive one. So $25 over $200. They both look great. You can actually tell quite a bit the difference in finish between the less expensive ones, they have a more flat finish, and the high dollar ones that are pretty glossy. The glossy ones, the high dollar ones, match the piano black trim really, really well. So like this trim here matches this really, really well. This one kind of matches the finish of the switches right behind it. So as far as looks go, they actually both look really, really good. What I'm more concerned about is how do they feel? So I mentioned that this one had some wiggle to it. It was a little loose. I can feel that back here at the back. Weirdly enough, the cheap one, the $25 one doesn't do that it doesn't have that wiggle here at the back. It actually feels like it fits a little bit better. My assumption is that's the coating on it versus the coating on this one. So all in all, like I think they're both pretty darn comparable. I'm probably gonna leave this one on just cause I, I really do like this finish a little bit better than I do like the bright gloss. It also doesn't show fingerprints. Not that you're touching on the front of it, but this car's fingerprinty enough with the dash and everything. I don't need another spot for fingerprints. So there we go guys, $25 over here versus over 200 on this one. I'm gonna take the expensive ones off and put both of them on the cheap one. This is a super easy install. I like the upgrade. No, you don't need to have these. It is largely cosmetic, but I think it looks cool. And if you have one that really stands out, like if these were red or yellow, uh, then that would be cool too. Maybe I'll powder coat these yellow and uh, have something really obnoxious in the interior. Now there is a question of design and copyright. Did the company that I bought these $25 ones steal the design of these really high dollar expensive ones? Did they both come out of the same factory? I do know that a lot of times when we have something with this big of a price differential, all the R&D was done by the company that charges a lot, and this design was stolen. On the other hand, sometimes they come out of the exact same factory off the same production line, and neither one of them spent any money to design it. So this will be a decision you have to make for yourself. I'm not saying these are bad. I'm not saying these aren't worth the money. I'm saying that from a fit standpoint, I think the cheaper ones, the less expensive ones, fit a little bit better. They're a little bit more snug than these are. You could probably shim this up a little bit and have it a little tighter, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna run these. As always, questions or comments, drop them down below. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Of course, I'll put links to both of these sets down in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time. And for those of you that said you wouldn't have this problem if you got a manual transmission, Charles, maybe I'll take those ones that stick on and put them in the R32 just to make you happy. Bye.